Okay, so we are studying the topic of graphs today. We're going to learn to draw a multitude of graphs and we have to know how they behave, how to find their equations and how to draw them. So we'll be doing one graph at a time, trying to nail that graph and then moving on to the next graph. All right, so today we're going to start with absolute value graph. Most of these graphs you won't have heard of before. Occasionally some of them you will have. Now, the most basic graph we have is this one. So we have the X and Y axis because it's a Cartesian graph. And we have this line here. Does anybody know what this line here is? No, it's got an equation. Yes, it is that positive form, but it's just very plainly y equals x. At every point on this graph, the x value and the y value are equal. All right? Now, we're going to take that graph and we're going to make it into an absolute, graph, an absolute value graph by making x this. Now those two lines around x mean that anything, it's like a bracket, anything inside those two lines is always positive. So if we had x as negative 3, the answer to this would be 3. Alright, so we would drop the negative sign on anything once we've calculated within that bracket. So if we're going to draw the graph of this, then... Anything that was negative is now going to be positive. So on our graph, where are the negatives? Below. Right, below. So this bit over here, we're not allowed to have negative y's. So all the values where x is made a negative, we're going to make them into a positive. So this graph will now look like this. All right. It's not a parabola. All right, it's just a V. We won't worry about parabolas just at the moment. Okay, so this is the absolute value basic graph. A V, all right, which goes one out every time it goes one here, it goes one here. Every time it goes one here, it goes, and the same on this side. So it moves one out, one up, one out, one up. The very basic Y equals the absolute value of x. But we can only draw one of those and that's it. So we need to learn to translate it around so we can actually use it in more than one place. So the general formula for that is y equals a absolute value x minus a plus b. That's our general formula. So it still has the part we're interested in, y equals absolute x, absolute value. But the other parts, the a, b, and the x, uh, sorry, the k, do things to the graph. All right? So when we're given an equation, we need to identify what a, b, and k are, and then draw the graph. So if we start with one that says, y equals x minus 1 plus 2. All right, the first thing we do is we write down what the values of k, a, and b are. So k is? Yeah. No. 1. Good. If it was 0, all of that would vanish, wouldn't it? 0 times, gone. Okay, what is a? So it's negative 1 here, so actually the A is just 1, alright, and B, 2, plus 2, alright, so what that gives us is a coordinate here, 1, 2, which is our vertex, now the vertex of this is similar to a parabola, and that it's the point where the gradient changes, so this point here. So that point there, which was on 0, 0, has now moved to 1, 2. 
all right? And then K being one means we haven't changed what the graph looks like. So we can just go here. One, two. That's where the vertex is. And now we can just go one out, one up, one out, one up. So we can just continue up like this, Mr. And that's our graph. This point's interesting because it goes through the axis there. So it's worth putting that point on our graph. Okay, so what if there is a K? Well, we need to figure out what that K does for us. So First of all, we need to find out what K, A and B are. So K is 2. What's A this time? 2. See how it's got a negative there? What does K, A, a have to be to make that a negative? It's got to be negative 2. So that the number that's in the bracket with the X always behaves a bit weirdly and that it's usually the opposite of what we see. All right, and B is negative one. So this time our graph is going to go, where's our vertex? Negative two, one. Negative one. So we find that value, negative 2, 1, 2, down 1, it's here. That's our vertex. Now we've got to deal with the K part. So the K says it's 2. That means it's been pulled like this to be twice as high at any point. So it's always a pulling in a vertical direction or a squashing. If it's above 1, then we're going to be making it bigger. If it's below 1, we're going to be making it smaller. If it's negative, what's going to happen? Upside down. Well done. So it will flip and be an upside down V. All right, but this is not a negative, it's positive two. So that means instead of going one out and one up, we're going to go one out and two up. So from our vertex, which is here, we're going to go one out and two up, one out and two up. So that point there is quite interesting because it goes through. And on the other side, we do the same thing and we get our V. Which I missed that point sometimes. All right, so it will be now skinnier. Okay, so let's just do one more with an example of a negative. And we'll make it up. Okay, so in this one, what is K? A negative half, what's A? Good. And B? 2. So our vertex is at 2, 0. 0, 2, in fact. Alright, so when we draw this one, we're going to start at 2 on the y-axis, nothing across, and 2 up. And it's going to be, so what does the negative do? Upside down, so it's going to come down the graph, and it's going to be wider because of that half. So instead of going 1 out, 1 down, we're going to go 1 out, half down, or 2 out, 1 down. So, one, two, one, one, two, bang, one, two, one, two. So, we're going to have those points. And, of course, you're going to roll with a ruler and actually end up getting it right. So, this one is a lot wider because it is a half and it's upside down. So, when we say that the graph is going to be 
positive inside that bracket. It doesn't mean we can't have negatives. But those negative values have been caused after the absolute value sign. If we get stuck and we're not quite sure, then what we should do is plot a point. So we should go, okay, I'm going to put zero in here. Zero plus two is two. Two is positive, so I don't have to worry about that. Two times two is four, minus one is three. So at zero, it's going to go through at three. All right, or negative two plus two is zero. Zero times two is zero. Minus one is negative one. So negative two will be at negative one. All right, or negative five plus three. Uh, it's two, sorry, pointing at two. Negative three plus, negative five plus two is negative three. Made positive is three times two is minus one is. So it will be at negative three, negative five, five. All right, so you can always plot points if you want to find out what's going on in the graph. That's all we're going to do today.